We have managed to turn this 68 overall offense at Ohio into a 3-3 team that has the number 10 overall offense in terms of yards per game, points per game, which is a little bit higher, but we do turn the ball over a little bit too much. As we look at the landscape of college football, Ohio State, Oregon, Georgia, Miami would be in right now if it finished up today, but we're only halfway through the season. We got a lot of good matchups this week, Alabama, Arkansas, as well as Michigan State and Purdue, just to name a few of the games that will be going on this week, but we are focused fully on Eastern Michigan. Also, please subscribe if you are new, like the video as well, really helps out the channel and motivates me to keep on going. But this Eastern Michigan team, they are 2-3, and three, and we are 3-3. Three and three. As you can see, loss, win, loss, win, loss, win. That is what we do. We haven't found that consistency yet, but we had a great game against Central Michigan last week that led to a big 45-point output. As we look at Eastern Michigan, they are 2-3, and three, but this defense that they have is actually pretty talented. Led by Jose Ramirez, probably their best player. He is a star impact player, the best player we've seen in the MAC thus far. On top of that, linebacker's pretty good, corner's pretty good, safety's pretty good. A lot of players that, hey, matchup-wise, we saw it against Akron. When we aren't able to do what we need to do, it really is tough for us to move the ball. So what we're going to do in this one, we're going to have to double-team Ramirez every chance we get if we're going to take the ball to that side, especially when we got a pass block. I mean, we just cannot protect Rourke at all when he drops back there. So quick throws as well over the middle, screens into the flats, and then again, a lot of misdirection, counters anyway, and try to push the ball to the outside with running backs. So to start this game is exactly what we do. Pull a couple guards, and Allison's got a few blocks to the outside. A nice little buck sweep to start this game. And Allison pushes it across to 30, quickly into their territory for 42 yards. Second and 10 from there. Screen set up to Allison, but poor tackling this time by Eastern Michigan. Leads to a flag here in which a face mask would actually push us 15 yards further. And we're in some pretty good field position here. Second and three. Just give it to Allison again. He cuts it up the middle just enough to find the first. And we're just going to feed him. You can tell he's tired back there, but just feed the back. He's going to get us into the end zone. And we got a quick touchdown. Two yards out. 7-0 Ohio to start this game. So penalty helping us out. And another big play from Allison. Setting us up in some good field position. This drive didn't quite go as planned. Third and 13. Couldn't really find anything. But he did have Burton there on third and 13. But again, Rourke's inaccuracy has been a problem this entire season. This time Rourke dropping back and finding Bengura on this play. Just enough to get the first down, 13 yards. And then on first and 10, give it right back to Allison. He's going to cut it up, shed a tackle. And then it'll be another poor tackle this time from Eastern Michigan. Undisciplined play from this team as another face mask would give us another 15 yards. Into the second quarter, this time we have to have Rourke get a carry here. And Rourke's got some space and some good blocking there on the outside. The speedy scrambling quarterback gets us another touchdown and we were quickly in our first few possessions 14 points on the board the offense was clicking and then setting up screen as we said simple pass plays if we're going to run them bangura this time with all of the space in the world eastern michigan just had no answer for this team we had a lot of big breakout plays just from simple plays screens handoffs nothing really too complicated but they were able to get the stop so we would be settling for a field goal 17 to 10 would be the score Working back to throw again, looking and firing this time. A wide open Miles Cross. Get it across the 50, 22 yards. Didn't want to take too many deep shots because, again, works in accuracy has been a problem as well as forcing the ball a little bit too much. But this time, O'Shawn Allison getting us a first down. And then on third and seven, trying to set up a screen, but Wigless couldn't shake the tackle. Nothing going. Fourth and six. Head coach wanted to go for it. We'll try to execute for him. Work back to throw this time. Firing wide open is Bostic, and he's got it for the first down. Perfectly executed play. And now it's time, a play action on first and 10, Rourke firing over the middle, Miles Cross again, this time getting it down to the one yard line from there, we're just going to give this one to Allison, and the back is going to finish the job, get us into the end zone, and quickly, 24-10, to 10. this offense really clicking in the first half, that's how we finish it out, 24-17 when we take possession again, this time a dangerous pass, but gets it to Miles Cross just in time, a punt gave us some good field position. Work this time was back to throw, firing to the outside, wide open, Miles Cross, and he would get it into the end zone again. We were just executing at an extremely high level in this game. Work this time firing over the middle would be dropped by Cross. Had a chance at a big play, and then on third and ten, can we do something? No, we could not. So Eastern Michigan would take over and score again. It's been a back and forth game in this one. 31-24. We just get the first there with Allison. Again, keeping it simple with our run plays. And then work here to throw. Dangerous throw. But he throws it up to Allison. And Allison goes up and makes a jump catch. 
Unbelievable play. Second and six. Work again finding Allison this time on a little cut route. First and ten again. And then on a play action from Mangura. Firing it. Thought he had a man, but not quite. This one was jumped. And Eastern Michigan with the interception. A little bit underthrown that time from Rourke. He actually kind of had him, but great speed. Didn't expect him to be that fast, and he made a play. Hey, credit to him. But after that pick, they would go and score a touchdown. Then we would fumble on the kickoff. I didn't even get to play it. And then they would go and get another field goal. So we were actually down a 10-point swing from one turnover. But we do have plenty of time to make something happen. So coming into this drive, I just kind of wanted to see the defense that they're running. First play here, we drop back to throw Rourke. Everyone drops back into coverage. They do tip it away, but we do notice something. They drop back everyone. They didn't bring any pressure. This time on a read option, a lot of space for Allison to get that time. And then third and four, we're going to trust them again. Can we get another first down? Just enough. And then on first and ten, we notice again, no pressure. They just drop everyone back into a zone. So I'm like, okay, let's take a few shots. Can work hit some windows? Work this time back to throw. Finds a wide open Walton along the corner. 14 yards. Again, no pressure. They only rush three. And Walton finds Wigless. And Wigless finds his way into the end zone for a 32-yard touchdown. Perfect execution. Rourke, with his best throw of the season, gave us the lead. The defense would get a stop. And now it was up to us to try and finish the job. Second and eight here, we're just going to try to give it to Allison, and Allison, perfectly done, gets it to the outside, gets around the corner, gets 27 and a big first down, we'd use all their timeouts, and then, with 110 left in the game, Allison, one more rush, one more first down, and the game is over, Ohio pulls out the win, ever so barely, 38 to 34, Allison is her MVP, 149 yards, two touchdowns, made some big time plays, but in that last drive, we noticed something. I don't know why they didn't pressure us. Rourke, he actually played pretty well in this game. The accuracy has been an issue, but in this one, did it perfectly and a great throw to get that game-winning touchdown to Wigless. Great game all around from this team. The offense was executing at a really high level. Really, really loved it. But we've noticed that this team, if you bring pressure on us, teams that blitz, we have no chance. So Eastern Michigan, that was a poor way to end this game, giving us a chance to try and just dissect the defense, and we did it perfectly to win that game. Great, great game plan, great, great win. We come in here and get the dub and put up a ton of yards and a ton of points, and our offense did exactly what it needed to do. So we had a great week. Did some other teams around college football also have a great week? Let's take a look. Michigan State and Purdue battled it out in the Big Ten, but it was all Michigan State in this one. No question for Sparty, they get the big win. Pac-12 cannibalization at its finest. Arizona State upsets Washington. Toughest place to go, and then Washington State going into Oregon. The number two team in the country falls. Ward this time the deep throw, touchdown. Washington State pulls off the upset. And then, the battle for the SEC West crown, Arkansas, Alabama, Arkansas, KJ Jefferson with the play of the day to tie this game, we'd head to overtime, where Arkansas would strike first, getting this one out, and then Bryce Young on fourth down, they needed a score, the quarterback scrambling out, no, he goes down, Bama goes down for the second time this season, and Arkansas sits atop the SEC West in a shocker. So crazy, crazy week of college football. Ohio State, Georgia, Oregon State, and Texas are your top four at the moment. Alabama, two losses, most likely out now. Oregon drops from number two to number 16. So a lot of shakeup around college football in a crazy, crazy week. But we are way more focused on a way bigger important aspect is our own season. Miami of Ohio, one of our rivals, we're going into Oxford this week. This team has won three of their last four. They did lose to Akron, just as we did. This Akron team, they really proved that they're better than they're worth. But as we look at this roster, one thing that you will notice is that, hey, their edge rushers, not great. Linebackers, okay. They got one guy who can cover really, really well. Matthew Solopick right there. He's the only guy worth the damn on this team. And everyone else, they have some pretty good coverage. So safety, cornerbacks, we won't be able to beat them one-on-one -on -one most likely. So... Run the ball to the outside, and again, short, quick passes. Exactly what we did last week, it's been working, and I think we found the game plan that really just we can utilize week to week. So going into this game, that was the game plan. Be able to run to the outside. However, 
This Miami of Ohio team came to play and they knew exactly what we were trying to run right as we were trying to run it. This time trying to throw a ball to the outside. Warwick had no accuracy in this game whatsoever. This time back to throw sitting up a screen after not being able to run the ball at all. This time they snuff it out. Nothing doing. A three and out. And again, third and three. This time you're trying an option. Options always work right. Nope, this time they snuff it out again. Another three and out. Third and ten this time. Firing and Rourke just can't hit a man over the middle. And it's another three and out. So we really had a tough first quarter not being able to get anything. But this time Allison just struggling his way to try and get a first. However, just as we get some sort of yardage. Nope, flipping on us. We're heading back. It's a first and 17. From here though, Rourke was able to find Burton. On the outside, Burton would shed a tackle, rambling his way down the sideline, just enough to get down to about the 20 yard line. A big play there for Alec Burton. And then this time, Rourke taking it himself, shedding a tackle, getting all the way, stiff arming his way into the end zone. And two big plays revived this offense and got us into the end zone. A 60 yarder and a 21 yarder. Hey, we'll take it. Not quite methodical, but big plays. This time it was Allison taking it right up the middle, finding the big hole. Good job by the big guys up front to make the play there. Work this time to find Walton. Quick screen. Get the ball out quick. Not big plays. Second and five this time. Rourke back to throw. Walton just beating his man one-on-one. -on -one. Great stop. Great pop. Great throw. Perfectly executed. it. And then third and goal. Give it to Bangura. And he gets into the end zone for an easy touchdown. So after taking the lead, we have a chance here to try and extend it. They give us the ball back with 55 seconds. Can Rourke run a two-minute drive? This time over the middle, getting it to Miles Cross really quickly. Trying to run some quick, heavy offense. This time, 50 seconds left. Rourke firing this one, getting it back to Cross again over the middle. They're just dropping back everyone to coverage. This time bringing a little bit more pressure. Leads to Walton getting open, getting some space, and beating his man into the end zone. That's a touchdown for Ohio. A perfectly executed two-minute drive, and we score just as the half hits, making it 21-10. to 10. We would get a stop right after that and a first down to start our next drive of the second half. And everything was looking up for Ohio. Work this time. Screenplay. Dumping it off. It's a check down. It's a miracle. This time to Allison. And again, something that plagued Eastern Michigan. Miami of Ohio falls for it. A face mask here. Extends our drive. And then on second and ten, Rourke. Back to throw, firing, and right as we get some momentum, it's an interception. Who else? The linebacker, solo pick, gets the pick. The guy who we said we just can't go at, we went right at him, and he made a play. That's what you do when you go at the best players. This ball was meant to be to the outside a little bit more. Uh, Rourke kind of underthrew it and threw it upfield rather than outside, so leads to a pick. We take over on the next drive because they weren't able to execute. So it's still an 11 point game. And this time firing to the outside again, it's Walton. We've noticed that we've actually been able to execute throwing those deep outside passes. So we've been just utilizing it. Their D tackles aren't great. So our offensive line has been able to push them up front, but give them a little bit of time to get some pass rush and they will take advantage as they do right there. And then third and 10, work to fire again. This time into double coverage, just a dumb throw. There was nothing to that. Nothing on work. That was all me, just being dumb, making it, trying to force something that was not there. And those are the kind of plays that are going to kill you. It was 21 to 10. We had everything going, and they go and score. Now it's fourth quarter. It's a four point game. We need to execute a screen here to Allison. Gets us across the 50 again. This big play offense continues to do what it does. Now on second and 11, Rourke firing this time, checking it down to Allison. We're not taking any more shots in this game. Just keep it short. This time going to Allison again, getting that one yard that we need, getting it perfectly. Third and one again, methodical drive we've had here. Just running the ball, short passes, screens, slants over the middle this time, finding Bostic, and he's got it inside the five. You know, once we get inside the five, we love to just pound it in. We do exactly that with Allison, and he gets the touchdown to extend our lead to 28-17. They would not execute, and we'd still have it. This time on third and 15, a risky play action, but still getting it to Walton this time for the big first down. Now with two minutes left, we have a chance to run out this clock as Bengura gets the first down. He's had a pretty good game. Him and Allison working as a duo back back there, just trying to get as many rushing attempts for our players as we can. This time, Miles Cross fighting his way, but it's a flag on the play. It would end up being against Miami of Ohio, another face mask. Absolute killer for them when they needed a stop. We'd give it to Bangura. He would finish this game off for the first down. And we would walk out with a rivalry win. 
against Miami of Ohio. Big win for the Bobcats. Rourke had a pretty solid game. He started terrible, but then we were able to kind of find some big plays. His stats are a little bit inflated because he did have some guys make some big-time plays for him on the outside, whether it was Burton, whether it was Walton. So great, great game all around, though, taking nothing away from how these guys played. We were able to run the ball really effectively. You know, when we're able to run, we're very easily capable of winning a game. So I was really, really happy with what we were able to do and escape Miami of Ohio with a win. And we moved to 5-3. and three. 4-2 in the conference, very much in play for the MAC championship. So we finished off a great week, but did some other teams across college football the first time seeing the Ohio State Buckeyes. They certainly had a great week, pounding Penn State in this game, proving that they are the number one team in the country. Marvin Harrison Jr. making a big play here, proving Ohio State is number one. Then it was UCLA upsetting Oregon. Back-to-back -back weeks, the Ducks go down at home. This time it was Dorian Thompson Robinson doing it with his legs, and the Ducks go down again, this time to the Bruins. Staying in the Pac-12, USC and Utah had a heavyweight battle, but it was all Utes in this game, as Utah would prevail and get the big win. And then Miami and Boston College would battle it out in Miami this time. Boston College taking the lead. Miami needing an answer. Van Dyke this time. Back to throw. He's going to go. No, he's just going to take off and run with it. But he's not going to get it. And the Canes go down. The number five team in the country falls. So we've seen a few of these teams stumble. Oregon stumbled last week and this week again. Miami had a great chance. And then they stumble. So as soon as these teams get to the top, we just see them constantly fall. But as this season moves along, we're actually seeing it starting to take shape. So Ohio State, we saw they've kind of proven they are the best team after that big win over Penn State. Georgia narrowly beat Tennessee. A lot of big games still left on their schedule. Oregon State plays USC this week, so big game for them. Auburn and Arkansas will battle it out pretty soon here. Texas still got a lot of games in the Big 12. It's hard to go and win out through that conference. Same with Utah. Still a lot of games left, but a win over USC definitely helps. NC State, Wake Forest, they've already played each other. So interesting set there for the ACC. Clemson completely out of the picture. They've fallen off completely. Arkansas obviously still in it, as we mentioned, after a win over Alabama the week previous. Michigan State has had some good wins. Michigan as well, even the upset loss to Minnesota. Alabama probably out of it after that loss to Arkansas. Miami still very much in it, even at one loss. A lot of games to go in the ACC. You got Oklahoma there sitting. They got some games to probably upset some teams, but Kansas State, 6-1, still has a chance. The rest, maybe not a chance at the playoff, but still good seasons. And chances to win their conference, which is just as important. Jameer Gibbs out for seven weeks for Alabama. TJ Finley's been out this entire season for Auburn. They've had a backup quarterback playing, and he's gone undefeated. So will he even play? We'll see. Jalen Daniels is out against Texas. So that's going to be tough for Kansas. But for us, we're at 5-3. and three. We're looking pretty good in the conference up to this point. We'll take a full recap in the next video, so we'll go more in depth about everything along those lines, where we're at, even anything in the entire realm landscape of college football. So really excited about that. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. Please leave a like if you do enjoy it. Subscribe if you are new. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day, and of course, goodbye.